All our lives, we've been told. Work hard. Achieve. Get to the next level. But sometimes, our best efforts fall short. We start to think maybe we don't have what it takes. Or maybe we do. Jesus took on the sins of the whole world. He conquered even death itself. He invites us to follow him. He wants us to trust him. And through him, through his body and blood, we, we are united in Jesus. And who we are. Everything we're searching for. Hail Mary, full of grace. Our hopes and our dreams. Points to the Father. Who loves us unconditionally. Who called us by name. If you knew that receiving the Eucharist would change your life, what would you do? What would you do? What would you do? Join us for the year of the Eucharist. Good morning and welcome to the Chalice of Salvation, coming to you from the Holy Spirit Chapel at St. Michael's Cathedral here in Springfield. I'm your Chalice host, Passionist Brother Terence Scanlon, on this, the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. And thank you for joining us at this earlier hour. Friends, on this midwinter day, the Holy Spirit draws us together, both here in the Chapel of the Holy Spirit and via televisions into your home this morning. In our readings this day, Jeremiah paints a beautiful image as he describes a person who trusts in God. Like a tree by a gentle stream, cool and refreshed no matter the conditions. Certainly a feeling we can all aspire to achieve. And this morning we are pleased to welcome as our celebrant, Papa C.J. Watikas, pastor of St. Mary's Parish in Longmeadow. He is offering today's liturgy in memory of much beloved priest, Monsignor Leo A. LeClaire, who passed away 12 years ago this May. He was a good friend and spiritual leader to many. And Jennifer Gaffney from Sacred Heart Parish Community in Springfield will join us today as our music minister. And as always, we continue to remember and pray for those who are ill or homebound. We are mindful too of all who view this televised mass each week from your hospital rooms and nursing homes, as well as all of you joining us from home. We pray for you and your intentions, and we also keep in mind all those who care for your needs. And best wishes to all those celebrating those special birthdays or anniversaries today and throughout the coming week. Special congratulations to loyal viewers Mike and Ann Colbert of Wilbraham, who celebrated their 66th wedding anniversary this past Friday. The happy couple, members of St. Cecilia's Parish, first met in the eighth grade and have been together ever since. All of us here at Chalice send our sincere best wishes to you both. And as we do each week, we also enroll the names that you, our viewing community, have sent in today for the Book of Remembrance, which will appear during communion time. We pray for their souls and all our faithful departed. And friends, following our liturgy, Carolee McGrath will update us on the Senate process here in our diocese. It's right after the Mass today, asking you to please stay tuned. We now join Jennifer Gaffney from Sacred Heart Parish Community in our gathering hymn as we greet our presider, Father C.J. Watikas, and celebrate together the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Here in this place, new light is streaming, now darkness vanished away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And good morning. Good morning. As Brother Terry said earlier, we are here to celebrate the life and the ministry of a very good friend of our diocese and of us here gathered, our dear friend Monsignor Leo Leclerc who I will refer to during the Mass, as he often said, just call me Father Leo. So I'll call him Father Leo for most of the, the Mass. As we remember and pray for our good friend, Father Leo, let us take a few moments, at, as we always do at the start of Mass, to think about our life. We think back over this past week of our life, and for any of our sins, for any of our faults, we humbly ask God's forgiveness and God's mercy. And together we pray that I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of all of our sins, and bring us all one day into everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And on this Sunday we pray, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh my God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We invite you now to be seated and to listen to our scripture readings. A reading from the book of prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no chance of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted 
besides the waters, that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green, and in a year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can someone among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain you are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading now from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal regions of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes towards his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude and insult you and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But 
Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. So once again, we welcome all of you who are watching this Mass. We welcome all those who are here in the Holy Spirit Chapel, family members of Father Leo, uh, those uh, representing the community of Our Lady of the Elms, as well as those representing his parish in Chicopee, St. Rose de Lima. It's great to be here to celebrate this liturgy with you as we celebrate his birthday, which was February the 11th. Our Lady of Lords, and it's amazing, I have found, how many people in this world, like Father Leo, were born on February the 11th. So once again, good morning. One of the hardest challenges of being a parish priest in any diocese is that during your priesthood, you are reassigned to serve a different parish. Like being in military service, however, it comes with the vocation. And priests know it on the day of their ordination. They know that they will joyfully serve a parish for a number of years and then be reassigned to serve another parish. A beautiful custom that you don't hear a lot about is for a parish family to send a letter ahead to the parish who will be soon receiving the reassigned priest. 33 years ago today, on February 13th, 1989, a letter was written and sent from the parish family of Notre Dame in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, to the parish family of St. Rose de Lima in Chicopee. The letter was a letter of introduction, a letter of love, as well as, as gratitude, letting the Catholic community of Chicopee know what was soon to come down the pike. The letter reads as follows. Dear St. Rose, on Saturday, February 13th, 1989, a very special man will leave our midst and begin his new life with your parish family. This is a gentleman, a man who will share your joys and sorrows as if they were his own, a man who will love each of you as a parent loves their children, a man who will love your children as if they were his own a man who will listen to your problems and forgive your sins and never condemn, a man who's a friend to all who know him, a man who is so proud that people from other parishes will come to your parish church just to be in his midst as they have done to ours, a man who is so much in love with Christ that you will see it in his eyes each and every time he says Mass. This man has baptized our babies, blessed our anniversaries, administered the sacraments to each of us. He has eaten in our homes, partied with us, and shared our sorrows, prayed over the sick and dying, and buried the dead. Each time it was done with compassion and love. Love this man as we love him, for it is with great sorrow that we send him to you. Great sorrow, a lot of love, and great pride. We will miss him dearly. His smiling face will be with us always, and he will walk amongst us for a long, long time to come. Lovingly, from the parish family of Notre Dame in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Should that every priest in our diocese or any diocese, have a letter sent like that to the parish family that they will soon call home. I've never read that letter, but I've read it, I've heard about it over the years, and I found it recently among Father Leo's homilies that his brother Paul gave me a number of years ago. What a testament of love. What a testament of love and gratitude from a parish that was losing its pastor to a parish that was welcoming 
a new pastor. This weekend in our Diocese of Springfield, Bishop Byrne has asked all parishes to have a special collection for a seminarian, for what is called the Seminarian Vocation Fund. This collection will be for the education and care of our future seminarians, and hence our future priests, whom we pray, we pray, will be modeled after the kind of gentle and good priest that our friend, our special friend, Father Leo was. Back in 2005, Father Leo was asked to reflect on his vocation uh, and the priesthood for a special newsletter, and he was asked to give advice to seminarians facing their transitional diaconate ordination. I think his advice and his answers to the questions that were asked of him were timely then, but are even more timely today in 2022. As we pray for the priesthood, vocate, as we pray for priesthood vocations, and as we celebrate the life and ministry of Monsignor Leo, I invite you to sit back and listen to these questions and answers. He was asked, what do you see as the biggest difference or challenges for seminarians today facing the priesthood versus your seminary days? He wrote, I believe that serving God's people more efficiently will be a bigger challenge for them, and as a result of the fewer numbers of priests available, they will also face a greater need to surface lay leadership and collaborate with deacons and religious sisters and brothers. This challenge becomes even greater due to less peer support in that many of their brother priests will not be contemporaries of theirs, but on the other side of the generation gap. This is support they will greatly need as they deal with the changing negative attitudes of some people towards the church and the priest. One of the challenges that remains the same throughout time for priests is the constant struggle to discern, accept, and implement God's will in their life. This implementation provides an ageless challenge as well, one of being able to balance action and prayer effectively. He was asked, what are some of the hardest lessons you have had to learn in your capacity as a priest? Father Leo said, for me personally, lesson number one is that you can't bargain with God, but only surrender. In this surrender comes lesson number two, which requires total trust in a loving God. Lesson number three is accepting the fact that I don't have all the answers, and I can't make everything all right, but only just be with the person and suffer along with them. He was also asked, what should... What should you say are three qualities needed to be a good priest? Father Leo said, one must have a sense of the Eucharist, trying to remain in, in intimate contact with the body of Christ as it comes to us on the altar and as it shows itself in the city, the hospital, or the parish office. One must develop a sense of service, an example, having a caring heart and being nice to people. Lastly, what is needed is a good sense of humor. An example is the ability to laugh at yourself, overlook the negatives, and not to sweat the small stuff. Finally, Father Leo was asked, what advice would you give to seminarians regarding living a satisfying and rewarding life as a priest? I love his answer. He said, faithfulness as a priest is a struggling journey towards holiness. You thank God for being patient with you. You must firmly believe and remind people that God is crazy in love with them. There are two statements which I fall back on frequently. The first by Senate Chaplain Peter Marshall, which summarizes my feelings in this area. Lord, when I am wrong, make me willing to change. When I'm right, make me easy to live with. The second one by poet John Kinsella is, the day you were called to break bread for a living is the day you were called to be broken. My brothers and sisters, on this Sunday morning as we celebrate the Chalice Mass, we celebrate the life of our special friend, Monsignor Leo. 
May he continue now to pray for us as we continue our journey on this earth. And may his soul, may his good soul, and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God forever rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Together now we stand, and as we stand, we pray the prayer that is prayed by Catholics throughout the world, the Creed, as we pray that I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah says that blessed are they who trust in the Lord. Trusting that the Lord will hear our prayers, we call to mind our needs and the needs of the world. Our response will be, Lord, hear us. For the church, that we may be an outward sign of God's favor toward the poor, the hungry, the excluded, and the grieving, by giving, nourishing, welcoming, and consoling those in need of God's blessings, let us pray. Lord, hear us. For leaders in government, that they may be attentive to the needs and concerns of the least influential of those they represent, let us pray. Lord, hear us. For those who are homeless and all who cannot afford to adequately protect themselves and their families from the bitter winter weather, that they may be kept warm and safe, let us pray. Lord, hear us. For married couples, that their love for each other may be strengthened as they exercise it with each other and their families, let us pray. Lord, hear us. We remember in prayer today Monsignor Leo Leclerc on this 12th anniversary of his passing, and for the names we now enter into our book of remembrance this day, we pray that all are in God's loving embrace. Let us pray. Lord, hear us. God of mercy and love, your son taught us your special care for those who are poor or hungry or weeping or excluded. May we reflect those blessings to others as we make these prayers to you through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to be seated now as the altar was prepared for the consecration.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed mankind in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all of its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, with all the saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, together with our local bishop, Bishop William Byrne, together with all the clergy, all religious sisters and brothers and deacons and faithful men, women and children all around the world. Remember this day, our dear special friend, Monsignor Leo A. Leclerc, whom you've called from this world and from our diocese to yourself. Grant that Father Leo, who was united with your son in a death like his, 
may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all of our brothers and all of our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with all the blessed apostles, with all the saints, with St. Leo the Great, with St. Rose de Lima, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together now, as we stand at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we pray that same prayer that Father Leo led at church, whether at St. Rose or the Elms College or Notre Dame. We pray the prayer in which we call God in heaven, Father, as we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us turn and offer each other a sign of our Lord's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. My friends, behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring all of us one day into everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And I invite those who are watching this Mass this morning to pray with me now the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart 
I embrace you as already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To say good night, for every road must end to the ones who care and are always here. Our very special friends, let's say good night to those we love. Maybe shed a tear. But before we close, let's think of those we love but can't be here. Let's raise our hands to absent friends, for every road must end. You will always be there in our hearts. And our long journey ends. We will never be alone, you see. We'll be with absent friends. Let's raise our hands to absent friends. For every road must end. And I invite all those who are watching and those who are here in the chapel to pray with me now our prayer for the year of the Eucharist. Jesus, I believe that you are truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. In you I place my whole family. Heal our wounds and renew us in heart and mind with a greater reverence, devotion, and love for you in the Holy Eucharist. Our Lady, first tabernacle of the Word made flesh, Intercede on our behalf to your Son, especially for the Diocese of Springfield and our priests. Through their love for the priesthood and the Eucharist 
May they inspire young men to the priesthood, that the Mass may continue to be offered, so that we may be nourished with your Son's body and blood. Guide especially our youth to your Church, so they may thrive by knowing the truth that only comes from Jesus. Most Holy Trinity, I adore you. My God, I love you in the most blessed sacrament. Amen. And let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we, your sons and daughters, may always long for that food by which we truly live. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before our final blessing, a thank you to dear Jennifer for leading us in music. Thank you to, again to Father Leo's family, his friends, and to you for joining us today as we remembered in prayer our very special friend, our dear friend Monsignor Leo LeClaire, known to many of us as Father Leo. My friends, the Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless each of us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass on this Sunday morning is now ended. Let us all go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day. family is made up of every race. We are young and old, rich and poor, men and women, sinners and saints. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We establish orphanages and help the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing relief and comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other scholarly or religious institution. We developed the scientific method and laws of evidence. We founded the college system. We defend the dignity of all human life and uphold marriage and family. Cities were named after our revered saints who navigated a sacred path before us. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have consistently guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church. With over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith, for centuries we have prayed for you and our world, every hour of every day, whenever we celebrate the Mass. Jesus himself laid the foundation for our faith when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. For over 2,000 years, we've had an unbroken line of shepherds, guiding the Catholic Church with love and truth in a confused and hurting world. And in this world filled with chaos, hardship, and pain, it's comforting to know that some things remain consistent, true, and strong, our Catholic faith, and the eternal love that God has for all creation. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. Ours is one family, united in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are Catholic. Welcome home. All our lives, we've been told. Work hard. Achieve. Get to the next level. But sometimes, our best efforts fall short. We start to think maybe we don't have what it takes. Or maybe we do. Jesus took on the sins of the whole world. He conquered even death itself. He invites us to follow him. He wants us to trust him. And through him, through his body and blood, we are united in Jesus. 
everything we're searching for. Hail Mary, full of grace. Our hopes and our dreams. Points to the Father. Who loves us unconditionally. Who called us by name. If you knew that receiving the Eucharist would change your life. And change the world. What would you do? What would you do? What would you do? Join us for the year of the Eucharist. Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Mom, call me when you're not so busy. If you had the opportunity to speak directly with the Pope Francis and or Bishop Byrne, what would you tell them about the Catholic Church? That's the big question being posed to the people worldwide and here in the Diocese of Springfield. But before local consultations can begin, the Senate team for the Diocese of Springfield is looking for volunteers to help with the process. Carol Lee McGrath joins us now with more on the local effort underway in Western Massachusetts as Catholics reflect on how they are walking together. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. Father Michael Piers leads the opening prayer at the Synodal Information Session at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish in Northampton. The theme for the Worldwide Synod is for a synodal church, communion, participation, and mission. The Pope is asking Catholics to discern God's mission for the church. The synodal team, or committee facilitating the Diocese of Springfield's participation in the Synod, has been meeting weekly to initiate a plan to reach out to parishes, religious communities, and Catholic and non-Catholic agencies that care for those who are often marginalized. Synod means being together on the way, journeying together. And the fundamental question is, how are we doing this in our local church? How are we doing this in the universal church? Father Piers, the pastor of St. John the Evangelist Parish in Agawam, is leading the synodal team. The diocesan phase began last October and will run through mid-year, leading up to the assembly of the Synod of Bishops in 2023. And this is one of our um, Synod information meetings that we've started holding uh, here in January and February. And so the effort that we're engaging in right now is to really build up the excitement, build up uh, communications on the fact of the Synod and the good work that can be accomplished. Celeste Labby, the director of the Office of Faith Formation for the Diocese, is on the Synodal team. This is the first phase where we're really getting the word out in our diocese what the Synod is all about, and then trying to recruit volunteers to help us with this effort. This is a monumental task. We have nearly 900,000 people in the walls of this diocese that we need to reach, and our committee of six couldn't possibly do that on their own. The team is looking for Synod ambassadors, which would promote the effort regionally. They're also looking for other volunteers that can help with facilitating, note-taking, hospitality, communications, and prayer. 
Once in place, these volunteers will help with consultative sessions in March and April. During these sessions, which will be held in community centers, senior centers, libraries, and coffee shops, people from all across the diocese will be able to meet with each other and listen to each other. The purpose of the Synod is not to change church doctrine, but to listen to each other and to journey together. And based on the promptings of the Holy Spirit, what would you say to Pope Francis? And what would you say to Bishop Byrne? Some of the questions to be considered in the diocesan consultations include, what particular issues in the church and society should we pay more attention to? How is God speaking to us through the voices we sometimes ignore? And what difficulties, obstacles, and wounds are in the local church? People of different denominations, um, those on the margins that are never reached out to, you know, those in prisons, those, you know, in, in other facilities. Um, it's our job to really go out into the community and offer everybody an opportunity to share what's on their heart. The results of the sessions will be synthesized and sent to Bishop Byrne and then to Pope Francis. A lot of um, um, expressions of, of, of hurt or memory or opinions or um, joys even, there will be a lot of expressions that we hope to bring forth and forward and to hear from one another, to engage with one another. But in that effort, we'll be able to listen more acutely to the work of the Holy Spirit to work um, to listen together what does bring us together and it is that gift of the unifying action of the Holy Spirit. Look at the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. We just celebrated Christmas several weeks ago. How do um, Joseph and Mary bring our focus to Christ and, and all of us who are made in the image and likeness of God can truly bring uh, focus to the joy and the life of, of, of Christ at work in the world. And so with the Holy Spirit as the guide, the diocese continues to move forward. In Northampton, I'm Carolee McGrath. Thanks, Carolee, and our best wishes for a successful Senate process here in the diocese. To learn more, log on to dialspringfield.org slash Senate. Even if you cannot attend or help out, your prayers are greatly appreciated. I want to thank Father C.J. Watikas for his presence with us today and for taking time away from his parish to celebrate our Mass this morning. We thank all who joined us in the Holy Spirit Chapel as well. And we're grateful to Jennifer Gaffney for providing our music ministry this day. And thanks as well to all of you in our viewing community for spending this hour with us this Sunday. And please join us again next Sunday morning, back at our regular hour, as we welcome Father Jack Schaefer as our Mass presider and celebrate together the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. And again, that's all coming your way next week, right here in the Chalice of Salvation, your spiritual connection. And from all of us here at Chalice, we send you our loving prayers for a very happy and safe week ahead. Goodbye for now. May our loving God bless you and all those you hold close and dear. God bless.